and amen. And amen. 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 Glory, glory, glory to God. The Grinch who tried to steal Christmas. Amen. amen. We are all familiar with the awesome children's uh, Christmas tale by the beloved Dr. Seuss, the Grinch who stole Christmas. Amen. It's about a, a, a reclusive, green, nasty creature that hated Christmas. Mm -hmm. He hated Christmas, and he tried to ruin Christmas for the cheery citizens of Whoville. For those of you who know the story, you know where I'm going, amen? Reluctantly joined by his hopeless dog, Max. I can see Max now dressed as a reindeer. I can see the antlers on Max's head that are so big and so heavy that they weigh Max down, amen? And I can also see the Grinch dressed like Santa Claus. They stole all the presents and all the decoration and all the food while the villagers were asleep. However, the bitter Grinch finds a hitch in his plans. Mm -hmm. He finds a hitch in his plans when, 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 when he encounters a sweet little girl who decided to try to befriend him, amen? Mm -hmm. Sometimes when people befriend us, it can change our minds amen. about how we feel, amen? amen? After she invited him to a festive Christmas occasion in the town, the Grinch began to have a different outlook. He began to change the way he felt about Christmas. Amen? Amen? And so it was. The little girl stopped him from destroying Christmas for all of the citizens of Whoville. Amen? Amen. And he was welcomed to Whoville once again. And we all know the end of this story. And they all lived what? Amen. Happily ever after. Amen? Amen. As we dissect the text this morning, Herod was just like this Grinch. Herod was just like this Grinch. He tried his best to steal Christmas from all of us. He tried his best to steal Christmas from all of us. But how many of you know that the real meaning of Christmas is Christ? Amen. The real meaning of Christmas is Christ. Amen? Amen. In our text today, Herod thought that he had a plan to destroy the baby Jesus. Amen? He thought he had a plan to destroy Jesus. Amen? How many of y'all know that God is the ultimate planner with much intentionality? Amen? Amen? He has much intention for us. Amen? Never wavering and never failing. Amen? When the Lord appeared to Joseph, he gave him specific instructions and directions. Amen? Amen? Look at the commonalities. I want you to look for a minute. I want you to look at the commonalities from the adorable Christmas tale and the real meaning of Christmas. Amen? The real Christmas story. Amen? Amen. Here we have the Grinch who hated Christmas. He hated Christmas and we have Herod who hated Jesus. He hated Jesus. Amen? Amen. Here in the story, the Grinch came by night and he traveled down the mountaintop to Whoville. And then as we look at this Christmas story here, we see God giving orders to Joseph as he traveled by night to Israel. Amen? In the story, the Grinch had Max to travel with. He had Max to travel with here in the story, amen? amen. Joseph had Mary All right. and the baby Jesus yeah. to travel with, amen? amen? As I continue, a little girl sought after the Grinch to change his life, amen? And Herod, here in our text, sought after the young child to try to destroy his life, amen? But how many of y'all know that's not how the story ends? Yeah. All right. All right. That's not how the story ends, amen? Right. Christmas has always had its critics. And those that wanted to diminish 
the impact of the real meaning of Christmas. Amen? Amen? The real Christmas story. There are those that love celebrating this holiday with no regards to the one that the holiday is about. With no regards to the one that the holiday is about. Someone heard a lady once say, I don't mind celebrating Christmas. But does it always have to be so religious? What is Christmas without Jesus? There is no Christmas without Christ. Amen? Amen. These are the days and the ages and the times in which we live in. Amen? We want Xmas. We want Xmas. And not the Christ that goes along with it. We want the decorated house. That's what we want. We want the decorated house and the tree of Christmas, but not the disturbing tree of Calvary. All right now. That's not what we want, amen? Amen. It seems that Christmas has always been attacked from the very conception of the little baby that laid in the manger for all of us, amen? amen. Not just for some of us. Jesus came for all of us, amen? amen. So, 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 so when we get past the hustle and the bustle, when we get past all of the holidays, and when we get past the shopping, celebrations, and the gifts, and the decoration, and the dinner, even when we get past the traveling, guess what? Christmas is still about that little baby boy all right, now. that was sent to be the savior of mm -hmm. the world. Amen? Yeah. That will never change. I don't care what we do. Right, that now. will never change. Amen? Or oh, if I could just recreate the story of the Grinch who stole Christmas, and if I could just give it a new name, it would be the Grinch who was saved by Jesus. All right, All right now. The Grinch who was saved by Jesus. Oh, yeah. Let's put that at the movies. Boy, Jimmy, see how the movies did. <laughs> Let's see how many people will become saved then, amen? Mm -hmm. Then we'll see if we can top the day of Pentecost. All right. All right. When over 3,000 souls were saved, were saved amen? Let's see if we can top that, amen? Well, well. Grinch Herod, Grinch Herod, my bad, my bad, I'm sorry. King Herod, pardon me, had received word that the king had been born. Uh -huh. A king had been born. Y'all know when somebody threatens you, uh -huh. when you're threatened by somebody, then all kind of things go through your mind. Amen. And here we see in the story, Herod was threatened uh -huh. by Jesus, amen? Amen. He was looking for that king that had been born, and he was dwelling somewhere in Bethlehem. Well. The news of the birth upset the city of Jerusalem, and the king himself immediately began to devise a plan to destroy Jesus. He devised a plan to try and destroy Jesus. Amen? King Herod was going to destroy any thoughts of Jesus becoming a future heir. He thought he was going to destroy the very idea of Christmas before it ever took hold. He thought. But how many of y'all know that's not how the story ends? That's not how the story ends, amen? So, 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 so now let's begin to look at the text. There are four essential and powerful secrets. Y'all know secrets back in the day when somebody would tell you a secret, you didn't tell anybody, amen? At least you weren't supposed to. Some of us in here are guilty of sharing other folks' secrets, amen? All right. But this is a secret I want you to tell everybody. <laughs> I want you to get the word out. They got the word. I want you to get the word out, amen? I want you to get the word out. But there are four essential and powerful secrets that are hidden in this text. That will be made known today, amen? amen? If you will just allow the Holy Spirit to do so, amen? amen. So let's prepare our hearts and our minds to digest yeah. the secrets this morning, amen? Yeah. Amen? But, 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 but I don't want you to keep them a secret, amen? amen. Because, because, because that's what King Herod wanted us to do. But hark the herald angels sing. Right. Glory to the newborn yeah. king, amen? He is the king of Israel, amen? The powerful, unhidden secrets begin today. Amen? Number one is the disturbing dream. Mm. 
Number one is the disturbing dream. And we're going to look at verses 13, 19, and 22. Amen? And then we're going to talk a little bit about the departure. Joseph's departure. Amen? And then we're going to look at verse 14 for that. Then we're going to talk about the death for just a minute. Amen? The death of Herod. Amen? And, and, and we're going to look at verses 15, 19, and 20. And then we're going to end with the dwelling place. Mm -hmm. The dwelling place in verse 23, amen? And for all of those that are writing, the disturbing dream, the departure, the death, the dwelling place, amen? amen. Look with me for a minute at the text, amen? Look with me at, for a minute at the text, amen? The Bible tells us that faith cometh by what? Hearing, hearing and hearing by what? The word, of God. the word of God, amen? Sometimes when we hear the word of God and Prayerfully this year when you hear it and hopefully you've read it before this time But even if you have not sometimes the Lord gives us new revelation Amen. He gives us a new revelation and that's what he did this time for me. Amen. Amen. So 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 look with me at verses 13 19 and 22 and I'm gonna read them again And verse 13 says and when they were departed behold the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream saying arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Let's go down to verse 19. And verse 19 says, But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Verse 22 says, But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea in the womb of his father Herod, he was afraid to do thither. Notwithstanding, being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. Amen? Amen. In the Christmas story, in this Christmas story, every time God spoke to Joseph, it was in a what? Dream. It was in a dream. Every time he spoke to him, it was in a dream. Amen? Amen? Every time he spoke to him, it was in a dream. God spoke to him in a dream to help ease his mind concerning the birth of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And also, he spoke to him in a dream as far as helping him to understand that he should marry Mary. Amen? Amen. God speaks to him in several dreams in this passage. Jesus was now a small boy in the text, possibly around the ages of one and a half to two years of age. Amen? The moment God spoke to Joseph about the impending danger, it had to be rather disturbing to him because, because, because the family had previously left Nazareth and moved to Bethlehem. Y'all know sometimes when we move too much, what happens? Right. Sometimes we leave things behind. All right. Sometimes it tears our bodies apart. Right. When we continue to move, move, move. Sometimes you may have help. And sometimes you may not Amen. have help moving. Amen? In verse 22, we see that Joseph is moving again. There have been four times in this short narrative that Joseph received divine instructions through a dream, amen? Although there were threats all around them, God carefully, this is the God we serve, amen. God carefully orchestrated Jesus' early days, amen? Yeah. He orchestrated his early days, amen? Jesus was a child, so, 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 so he could not act on his own defense. My Lord. He was a child. And it's amazing how God put people in charge of our lives. Amen? amen. It's amazing how he surrounds us amen. with people in our lives. Amen? amen. Sometimes they stay and sometimes they go. Amen. But it's amazing how the Lord can orchestrate something in your life to work for your good. Amen? amen. But, 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 but here in the text, Jesus was a child. And he could not act in his own defense. But God's steady protection... And Joseph's faithful obedience. Now, you got to be obedient. Mm -hmm. You can't just do what you want to do. Thank you you got to be obedient to the word of God. Amen? Amen? This was also combined with his safety from danger. It kept the Grinch away. It kept the Grinch away from him. Amen? Amen. When God is for you, guess what? Amen. It doesn't matter what anyone else says. Amen. Because what belongs to me Thank is mine. Amen. Amen? What God has for me. It is for me. Yeah. Amen. What he has for you is for you. Amen? amen. But it doesn't matter what someone else might say. Amen? amen. Now the Lord was moving them again. And before the story is complete, they would have to move again. Mm. 
they would have to move again. How many of you know that ministry is just like this? Ministry is just like this. It's not in one place. The Lord has charged us to go out into the hedges and the highways, y'all. Yeah. Right. He's charged us to go out into the hedges and into the highways to compel people to come. Amen? Amen. But guess what? Before you can do it, you got to be right with the Lord. Amen. Right. You can't go out here and compel people to come to the Lord if you ain't right. All, All right. right. Say that. Say that. If you ain't in right standings, amen? amen? Because guess what? You get ready to make a mess of the orchestration. Amen. You get ready to make a mess of the orchestration, amen? amen. But, 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 but here in the text, we see Jesus being orchestrated throughout this whole process, amen? amen. When we lift up the name of Jesus, yeah. he promised to do the drawing, amen? Yeah. We got to lift him up, y'all, wherever we go, yeah. whatever we do, amen? Wherever the Lord sends us, wherever he leads us, that's where we are to follow. Amen. There are no exceptions to the rule. Amen. Amen. All of these moves that Jesus was considered as, they were all considered as geographical tours. They were all considered as, 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 as geographical tours on the way to Jesus' hometown. Amen. No Grinch can steal that joy. My Lord. When I have joy, nobody can steal it. Amen. I don't care what you try to do, Amen. but nobody can steal my joy. Amen? Amen? Nobody can steal the joy that Christ has given to me. Jesus was here in the text. Jesus was the recipient that bared that, and the bearer and the fulfillment of the promises made to Israel by God. Yes. Right. It was a proven fact. Amen? Amen? Look with me in the text for a minute. Look with me in the text for a second. Let's go to verse 14 in the text. Let's go to verse 14 in the text and let's talk about the departure. Verse 14 says that when he rose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. Mm -hmm. Y'all know when we travel anywhere by night, we sure enough have to have a GPS. Amen. But isn't it amazing how when the Lord had them to travel at night, he orchestrated their move. Amen. He showed them exactly which way to go. Mm -hmm. How to dodge the enemy. Mm -hmm. You all know that's what's happening to you every day. Amen. That as you move about, the enemy's coming. Uh -huh. yeah, He's right there. Oh, and the Lord is orchestrating your moves. Yeah. You, He's orchestrating your moves every single day. But here in the text, look at how strategic the Lord was with his plan. Joseph was ordered to take the young child and his mother by night, by night into Egypt. As we look at the text, there is a reason why God wanted them to flee through the night. There's a reason. Remember, remember when the Magi, the wise men came in search of Jesus in chapter 2? Remember when they came in search of Jesus, amen? They went to Herod the Grinch. They went to Herod the Great, amen? amen? Herod the Great in Jerusalem to ask where the first child was. Where he was. Where was the newborn? Where was the king of the Jews, amen? Herod became so paranoid. Here he goes again, being threatened, amen? He was so paranoid that this child would threaten his throne. My Lord. Now what's wrong with that picture? If you got it all together, you shouldn't be threatened by nobody. Amen. Amen. There's something wrong with that picture if you're threatened. Amen. Amen. Demons follow people that are threatened by stuff. Have mercy. So be careful if you're threatened by anything. Amen. My Lord. Glory to God. Herod initiated the massacre of the innocent in hopes of killing this child. Amen. So, 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 so when the angel appeared at night and gave the instructions to Joseph, it was time to move, amen? Y'all right, right. know sometimes you can't sleep at night. My Lord. Sometimes you just got to get up and pray. But if the Lord say move, guess what? Move, move. It doesn't matter how you feel. All right. Because he ain't going to let you rest until you do what he said do anyway. Amen. Right. If he say get up and move, then guess what? That's what you're going to do, amen? amen? That's what you're going to to do, amen. So, 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 so here we have the angel appearing, amen. Egypt was a logical place to find refuge here because, because, because it was outside of the dominion of King Herod. 
Now think about it for a minute. They're traveling at night. They don't know where they're going. But look at how God orchestrated their move and took them outside of the dominion of King Herod. So guess what? Where they were, they were that where they were, Herod couldn't touch them anyway. He couldn't touch them anyway, amen? amen. Both Egypt and Judea were a part of the Roman Empire, but Herod still couldn't touch him. He still couldn't touch him. That's the kind of God we serve, amen? Yeah. That's the kind of God that, 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 that we serve, amen? Yeah. That's how the Lord works. When it's time for us to move, when the departure comes, it's time to go. Well, it's time to go, amen? Well. Look at the text with me for a minute, amen? And let's, and, let's, and let's look at the depth here. And let's look at verses 15, 19, and 20 in the text. And verse 15 says, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Amen. Verses 19 and 20. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel. For they are dead. They are dead. So that makes me think more than one person right. was trying to kill our Savior. Amen? Amen. They. Glory, glory, glory to God. They. They are dead. Which sought the young child's life. Amen? Amen. They are dead. In the text, after, after, after a time, the Holy Family returned from Egypt. It is believed that Herod died a very gruesome and a very gory death in, in, in 4 BC. But guess what? Mm. So did Jesus. My Lord. My Lord. So did Jesus. Amen? Amen. What's the difference? Jesus got up. Yeah. All right, now. Yeah. Say that. Yeah. Jesus got up. Yeah. That's the difference. Amen? Amen? Turn with me to the book of Hosea for just a minute. Amen? Let's go to the book of Hosea. And let's go to chapter 1 for a second. And I want you to see something. Look at verse 11 in the text. And it says, Then shall the children of Judea and the children of Israel be gathered together and appointed themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Zerrell. Amen? Mm -hmm. Great shall be the day of Zerrell. Matthew used Hosea to explain how the prophecy had been fulfilled in the return of Joseph Mary and Jesus from Egypt. Amen? Amen. And y'all know, I'm going to tell you right now, when Jesus is for you, can't nobody mess with you. Amen. Amen. Nobody can do anything to you. Amen. Amen. They may try. Say that. Bless it, Lord. Glory to God, but they can't do anything with you. Amen. 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 So, 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 so as we go back to the text, and look a little closer. Look at the end of, of, of verse 20. Amen? Look at the end of verse 20. And it reads, For they are dead which sought the young child's life. Who in the world are they? Who in the world are they? Amen? We know of Herod's death. But who in the world are they? I'm glad you want to know. I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you want to know who they are. The they were Herod's sons. Okay. And to pay up and his two younger brothers, well, his two elder brothers, amen. And to pay us and his two elder brothers, amen. So I want you to listen at this story and how it all fits, amen. And to pay up died five days before Herod died. Wow. Five days. You can't mess with Jesus. All right now. Say that. And that's not even how the story is. Say that. But you can't mess with Jesus, amen. Amen. He died five days before Herod died, amen? And, 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 and he wasn't even considered the successor of the throne, amen? He was a prince, and his two elder brothers were considered the successors to the throne. But look at how the devil works. Antipas had his brothers killed. Antipas had his brothers killed. So now we have Herod gone. We have the younger brother gone. We have the two elder brothers gone. So guess what? There's nobody left for the throne. That's right. You can't mess with Jesus. All right. Hallelujah. You can't even mess with Jesus' children. All right now. You just can't do it. 
The Lord knew that all of them were looking to destroy Jesus. Because, because even when Herod died, he thought his sons were going to take over. Guess what? God had another plan. Amen? God had another plan. And, and, and he didn't even have to destroy them because they destroyed themselves. They destroyed themselves. Amen? Grinch Herod and his clones didn't have to steal Christmas. They took their own lives when they started messing with God. My Lord. They took their own lives when they started messing with God. Amen. And 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 you all know as a parent, don't mess with my children. Amen. Now you want to see me change, don't mess with my child. Amen. You want to see me go someplace else, don't mess with my child. I might have to repent later. Ain't that the truth? Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. But don't mess with my child. Amen. And this is how Jesus is about his children. Amen. How many of you are one of his children? Amen. Amen. That's how he is about his children. Amen. I don't know if they are sleeping in heavenly peace or not. But I do know that you can't mess with the Lord. Amen. Amen. And think it's all right. Because guess what? You will reap what you sow. Amen. You will reap what you sow. Amen. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm hearing this morning? Amen. 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 It's, 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 it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas around here. Amen. It's beginning to look a lot now like Christmas on, around here. Amen. Let's, 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 let's look at the dwelling place here. All right. Go with me to verse 23 in the text. Amen. Let's look at verse 23 in the text. And verse 23 says, And he came and he dwelt in a city mm -hmm. called Nazareth, mm -hmm. that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. Amen? Amen. He shall be called a Nazarene. Nazareth was an agricultural village. It was 15 miles west of the Sea of Galilee uh -huh. and, 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 and between Capernaum and Cana. Amen? Although this was a dwelling place for them, it was obvious that they still had more traveling to do. My Lord. They still had more moving to do. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. I can hear Isaiah 9 and 6 say, For unto us a son mm -hmm. is given. Mm -hmm. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. Yeah, right. Right. And he will be called wonderful counselor. He will be called mighty God. It doesn't matter what you say, Harry. All right. He will be called everlasting father. Yeah. He will be called our prince of peace. Yeah. The Messiah is here, Herod. The Messiah is the wonderful counselor. The Messiah is the mighty God. The Messiah is the everlasting father. The Messiah is our prince of peace, amen? So, 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 so Grinch, we celebrate Christ because he is Christmas. He is the real meaning of Christmas, amen? There is no Christmas without Christ. We may not know if Jesus was born on December 25th. All right, right. And who cares? Amen. All right, yeah. Amen. Who cares? When he was born, our job is to celebrate. Our job is to celebrate his birth. Amen? Amen. I can see in Luke chapter 2 the shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock. By night. And an angel of the Lord appearing to them, telling them not to be afraid. Mm -hmm. Y'all know we are scared people sometimes. Amen. And when we see things that look a little bit out of the ordinary, All right now. what happens? We get a little stirred. Yeah. Yes, we do. I can see them out there. I can see him saying, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Yeah. For all people today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. This will be a sign for you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. I love those instructions. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I love those instructions. Amen. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Amen. Mm -hmm. That was the instructions that were given. Then I can see the heavenly host of angels praising the Lord. Yes, thank you. Praising the Lord and saying glory to God in the highest yeah, and on earth peace and goodwill among all people. Amen. So, 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 Grinch, 
This was the plan of God. So Herod, this was the plan of God. And, 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 and I don't know about you, but I'm grateful to God to be in his plan. I'm grateful that I'm a part of the plan. We were a part of the plan even before we were born. Even before we knew anything, we were a part of the plan. Amen? So, 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 so as I prepare to close, I pray that you're not a part of the family of Grinchers. All right. 